you're watching Roll for Crit, we're here today to talk about some financial news, specifically relating to the game publisher, Come On. ICV2.com reported on this just recently. Their public stock trading has been suspended as of April 1st on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. And this is stemming from some auditors' reports that raised what could be some red flags about the company. Uh, there are a few different ones. We'll have links in the description to tell you exactly what the details are. And of course, neither of us are financial experts. So if we get anything wrong or mischaracterize anything, we apologize for that in, av in advance. But essentially, the big takeaway from this is that there was a going concern opinion raised on Come On Games. And what that essentially means, uh, it could be one of two things. We don't know the full details because those haven't been released. But it looks like either there are things that are out of whack with Come On right now internally and that there are warnings that they need to shape up and get their financials in order. Uh, otherwise, things could get bad within the next year, or it could be even worse than that. And it could be that they are at major risk currently of bankruptcy. Now, Come On Games has responded. We'll have a link down below to the article they posted in which they talk about why the going concerns isn't as much of a big deal for them. They state that the reason they have this is a lot of their finances are involved with Kickstarters, which the Kickstarter money is labeled as a liability as well as an asset. It keeps this status until it is officially funded and then also shipped out. So therefore, once it's fulfilled, it's then just an asset, not a liability. In fact, some other people in the Reddit threads in response to talk about how it is a little bit harder to judge this company because it has, has such a focus on Kickstarters. Yes, that is definitely a, a big thing that separates Come On from other publishers, certainly of that size. Mm -hmm. uh, they're really I don't think there are any that are as heavily invested in Kickstarter as they are. Now, a lot of people are worried because one they have a lot of kickstarter so they're hoping they're think they can still get their game but Ankh is going to be released very soon so a lot of people are like oh well should i back this am i not gonna get it yeah Ankh, their their newest game that they've been you know building up and hyping up for a long time uh will be out this week will be launching on kickstarter and yeah that's certainly i mean it's there have always been reasons for people to be concerned about come on kickstarters in the past uh but this right now seems uh particularly scary especially uh with everything that's going on in the world right now i think consumers are a little worried come on would have you believe they want you to believe and they may be right i'm not <laughs> saying that they're not but like we said they are saying this is no big deal this is nothing to worry about they said we're going to keep going for years and here's our current projects and they're all slated they're all on schedule maybe not on schedule but you know we know what's happening with them uh here's where they're at in the process right now and yeah it's it, certainly the fact that they're so invested in kickstarter as we said it gives me cause to think that there there's probably is at least a little truth to that this is something to be concerned over. I think probably there's, it's like maybe somewhere in the middle, but if I had to guess, I think it's closer to the side of this being bad <laughs> than come on saying, no, it's no big deal. You know, we don't hear about any other companies. I mean, we said they're different, but this isn't something we hear about regularly about any other board game publishers. And I have to think that there's, there's something going on behind the scenes, even if it's at the very least, just the fact that this Kickstarter model of continuing to make a new Kickstarter uh, every couple of months, and sometimes maybe those funds are being used for something else, and then the next Kickstarter, the next Kickstarter, and so on and so forth. Maybe that's just not a great model. Well, and that's the thing we have to be know. worried about. There are, have been some companies where literally the for this like Kickstarter number seven is the money's going to Kickstarter number six. It's a Ponzi right. scheme. You right. know, <laughs> I don't think they're at, or they were out there just yet because most of those companies tend to fall pretty quick. It doesn't work too long. But the mm -hmm. problem is, like someone brought up in Thread that their, their major form of revenue isn't from Kickstarters. It's from retail. They still get a, an extremely large chunk from that. That right now is got to be a lot smaller than it was before. So I think a lot of the Kickstarters that already have been funded, you probably don't need to worry about. But with the way mm -hmm. that a lot of just local stores are closing or even like online sales could be at in a much different place, I'm a little worried about Ankh. Not because I don't think Ankh will have a problem getting funding, but if their next Kickstarter doesn't, like they need a little bit of buffer, I think. I don't think it's 
going to Ponzi yet, but they it's definitely going to be a lot harder this year because of everything that's going on. Yeah, I mean, there's there are enough r- reasons already that maybe you want to think twice before backing <laughs> a Kickstarter right now. Uh, this is another reason that's like, yeah, maybe really now this time. Maybe think four times. <laughs> uh, that's true, but let's not forget that the Marvel Kickstarter they recently ran was pretty much ready to go a few months afterwards. So right. I wouldn't be surprised if Ankh, they actually already have the molds ready. They know that they're probably going to hit or they were hoping that they would be able to ship this out before maybe the end of the year. Yeah, I I would agree with you. I think that Ankh is probably a safe bet. I think it's really like... Not that I like the practice. Yeah, (laughs) it's really by the end of this year. You know, I mean, like we said, that's probably what this going concern is saying is like, if you don't figure something out, things are going to start looking a little hazy for you. And it's... It's it's kind of crazy to conceive of because come on is outwardly seems so successful and they have all these really big licenses and huge managers games and they have huge funding levels on Kickstarter. I think their popularity and their name brand, like you were saying, is actually a good sign because a lot of companies like this, let's say they are starting to have financial problems. They might be able to instead of going bankrupt and we lose everything, maybe they'll have to cut their losses and sell a title to another company. That way, they'll still get the money to finish whatever Kickstarter, but maybe from now on, Ankh is being made by Fancy Flight. I don't know. (laughs) Not very likely, but that kind of thing could occur. I don't think we're going to see them just go belly up and disappear. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's probably true. You know, in spite of all of the things that go seem to go wrong, at least from a PR perspective with Come On, they do make some really great games and they have great designers working for them. And it would definitely be a loss for the industry if they were to go away. No, I mean, my problem with them really is because people can't get to experience all the blood rage or rising sun. I'm still excited for Ankh. Yeah. I just, I'm not a big fan of generally the Kickstarter model. Though I realize neither of us mentioned the other big uh, elephant in the room for them. The ice covered elephant, and that's probably a lot of people have already spent their money on Frosthaven. Yeah, that's a big one. Although, yeah, I, I don't even know anymore. I feel like people, <laughs> I, I don't know where they just have these saved up. Like, no, I'm ready to spend $150 on that miniatures games. I don't know if it's all just always different groups or. You're implying that we think <laughs> right. ahead instead of just purchasing and worry about the debt right. later. <laughs> Unfortunately, like we said, we really don't know the details of this. They're delaying their annual report from 2019. They So we aren't going to know, I don't know when we're going to find out exactly why this is happening and what it means, Uh, but we'll we'll see in a year, in a year's time, probably sooner, how they're doing and, uh, you know, if they're still around in the same way. Of course, that also, like, right now goes for a lot of other companies, so there's a lot of things happening in the world that could compound this issue, but... And in particular, once again, you know, neither of us studied finance. I can't remember the last time I took a financial class. I don't know when you did. That'd be never. (laughs) But if you are an expert of this, you know, we'd love to hear from you about this because we want to make sure we can parse the actual truth without either putting on rose tinted glasses or thinking the world's going to end instantly. I have a feeling it's somewhere in the middle ground. (laughs) Yeah. Comment below. You can let us know what you think. Of course, we've been seeing all the takes from people responding to this on Reddit and other places. Uh, You know, there's it's a lot of speculation right now, but... It's, it's something interesting to discuss. So let us know what you think and uh, stay tuned and we'll keep you updated if there are any new developments on this topic. My name is Jonathan. I'm Will. And this has been Roll for Crit. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and support us on Patreon. That would make us happy. Maybe the next video is the one where Jonathan does a silly dance. <laughs>